Hi, in this video in the MRDCL Fundamental Series, you're going to look at logical operators. You'll find the files for this video in DAT 07. Now, logical operators allow you to do shortcuts to do calculations on variables to build new variables. And we've got some examples in here, the first of which is going to look at how we might combine together a question where we ask people their favorite brand and then other brands that they've considered to make one variable of all the brands they've considered. So if we look at this script here, you'll see that we've got a variable called Q1, which is a single variable where respondents give their favorite brand as codes one to nine and zero for the 10 brands that we're talking about. You can see we've got a none of these or none category on the end for anybody who doesn't give any brands. Then we come to the next question where we've got question two where they are asked other brands that they considered besides their favorite brand. And as they could pick any number of these, these have been picked up as ones on fields five to 14 to get the 10 brands, the same 10 brands, with an E on the end for a none of these or a none category. And of course we can just take the labels from Q1 because they're exactly the same uh, labels, but a different title of course, because so we want XT equals Q2 other brands considered. Now what I want to do now is to build a variable that combines question one or two together so I get all the brands that are considered, that both the favorite and the other brands. I'm doing that by declaring a variable called Q1, Q2, and I've got the definition of that as being Q1 dot or dot Q2. Now this would be the same, and it would work of course this, as typing Q1 answer one, or Q2 answer 1, Q1 answer 2, or Q2 answer 2, Q1 answer 3, or Q2 answer 3, and so on for the 10 answers. That would be perfectly good syntax, it would work, but as you can see, dot or dot is a very much quicker way of specifying that. The only thing you have to take into account with a dot or dot is that you have to look at things like none or don't know on the end of the variable, because it would also dot or dot those together. So if somebody said they would their favorite brand was brand B, but they chose none for other brands considered, it was always brand B, the dot or dot would put uh, the none into Q1, the variable Q1, Q2, because it said none, or they would said none at question two. So to rectify that, we need to redefine Q1, Q2 as being Q1, Q2, the first 10 answers, but then replacing the 11th none with another E to get anybody who hasn't given an answer in the variable Q1, Q2. So that's quite an important thing to do when you're doing variables like this. The labels once again are the same, Q1, and we can label it or title it, all brands considered. Next, we're going to look at question three, and question three Similar sort of question to question two, it picks up all the brands that they've seen advertised, brand one, brand A through to brand J, with an E on the end for none of these. So that's a straightforward question. Now what we're going to do, we want to know what brands they've considered and seen advertised. So they only go into the variable Q1, Q2 and Q3, this variable here, if they chose it as a brand that they considered at either Q1 or Q2, and they chose it at Q3 as a brand they've seen advertised. So now we have a variable that holds just the respondents or just the responses for respondents where they chose it at question one or question two, but they also chose it as question three. So again, we could write that in a longhand way. We could define this as copy this little terrible name here to save you type it, we could type it as bracket Q101 or Q201 and Q301. Q1, I need the brackets, dollar Q102 or Q202 bracket and Q302. So we could define it like that and so on for the 10 codes. However, once again, of course, this shorthand way is a much better way specifying it. Again, I redefine the none of these categories, so I pick up the 10 answers and then put E back on the end so that I'm redefining none because they may have chosen some brands, they may have chosen some that they've seen advertised, 
but there might be none that they've considered unadvertised, and so that would be the none code. Now we go one step further. We're looking at now at brands they've considered and not seen advertised. So this time I'm defining a variable called Q1, Q2, not Q3. Now the way we specify that would be Q1, Q2 is the variable we want, and dot, not Q3. So there's two dots in here. That looks a little bit strange at first. So you would say dot, and dot, dot, not, dot Q3, which is hard to say. So that would pick up people who had said they had the brand at Q1 or Q2, but not at Q3. So that would be like saying in a longhand way, we could say something like this. We could say Q101 or Q201 and Q3 not one. And then so on again for the second brand up to the tenth up to the tenth brand. Put that wrong there, of course. And of course this is the reason why I don't do it this way, because it'd be so easy to make a mistake the time I got to the seventh code. So that's not that's not a good way of doing it in a longhand way like that for ten codes. Better to get rid of that and just use dot and dot not, even though the dot dot looks a little bit confusing. Again, redefine the not stated, and we've got our variable. So there's some uses of dot and dot dot or and dot not. The next example we're going to use that's in this series is dot by dot. So I've got a variable here called gender. Nothing, nothing unusual about that, 25, 1, 2. I've got a variable called age, again, very straightforward. Now I want gender within age, or the ages with the, the three age groups within the two genders. Again, I could define this in a long way. I could say that I want gender age to be gender 1 and age 1, gender 1 and age 2. And so on. Now that again is a long way to do it and a lot of typing. So I, I would tend to avoid that and so on down for the next two codes. So I would avoid doing that. I would just use a dot by dot, which means effectively that you're taking the three age groups, doing them within the first gender category first and then the second gender category. And these dot by dots could extend beyond that. So you could add dot by dot region and you would do all the regions within the first age for the first gender. Gender, You would do all the regions within the second age for the first gender, and so on. So basically you're moving from right to left when you do your dot by dot. So let's just take that off because region isn't a variable in this example. And then we can do tables on these just to check that everything looks right and this might be something you want to work through on the files that we supply. So let's just run that and have a look at what we get. And sure enough, with our two respondents here, we can see the favourite brand for the one female is brand D, for the male it's brand E. As we move down, the brands considered, they haven't got D and E here. They've got some other brands that they consider. The male for, uh, had A, C, G and I. And now we get to all brands considered, we can got A, C, E, the brand that was their favourite, as well as G&I. And then we get to the advertised brands. You can see the male shows A, B, C, D. When they got to the um, uh, considered and seen advertised, it was just A and C. And seen and not advertised, they just had E and G. So that does all the combinations. And here's age within gender. So we, we, we can see a sort of check on this table here. We can see that the male 35 to 44 comes out against the male. The female 55 plus comes out against the female. And as we scroll down here, you can see that we've got the male 35 54 year old coming out under 35 54 and the 55 plus female coming out here. So it looks as though our dot by dot variable is working absolutely fine. So that offers you some shortcuts for doing those types of variables where you want to use logical operators. I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you.